Good morning. We do give everyone a welcome this morning. If you're joining us in the hall or also online. Do apologise. I may be looking a bit strange if you're... Well, people might think I look strange anyway, but online people might think I'm a bit strange. I had a bit of an issue with technology this morning, so if you just could bear with me, do appreciate that. Um, just before we start, we're going to have a word of prayer. <coughs> Shall we pray? Father, we do just ever come before thee. We ever thank thee for the Saviour. We ever thank thee that he is the one that we seek to proclaim. We do this, Father, because we know that he is the only one that can provide a way of salvation. He's the only one that could ever pay that price of sin. He was the only one, our Father, that was ever good enough, ever willing, ever able to die at Calvary's cross and to be that perfect substitute. Father, we would just pray that if there are any even in this meeting, either online or in person here, that are not yet saved, that today would be that wondrous day when they would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves and accept him as their saviour. So, Father, we do pray for help. We need thee in everything that we seek to do. And we look to thee now in his precious and worthy name. Amen. Now, if you have a Bible, please, could we turn to the book of Matthew? The book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 14. <clears throat> And we're going to start reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to be reading from verse 13. Maybe well-known verses to some of us. And this is what it says. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and, and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves virtues, vict victuals, which is food. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart, give them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looked up to heaven. He blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained, twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men, beside women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, Bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was, a, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, 
save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where didst thou doubt? And when they were come un into the ship, the wind ceased. Then, the, then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Now we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word. Now just for a few moments, I just want to think. Think again on these verses that we've looked at this morning. Now for many... The title of the first part that we read, for many it would be the feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000, at least 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000. And we find that people there, they came to hear concerning the Lord Jesus. They wanted to see some miracle that he would do and he helped many sick and lame. And we read that. And then we come further through our chapter that we read this morning and we read of how the Lord Jesus Christ, he told the disciples after he'd done the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, of how he told the disciples to go to the other side and he would meet them and of how he was going to send the, the, those that had gathered away. He was going to send them away. Well, this morning, there's three words that I really want to concentrate on. Three words. Three words that I really want to concentrate on. And I'm sure you will understand what they are. And it's in verse 30. And it was from Peter. And Peter cried... Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And that is what I really want to think on this morning. Lord, save me. Now we thought, have we? We haven't really gone into the story of the feeding of the 5,000, but there the Lord Jesus has spent all that time talking with them, helping them. And they were hungry. And the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, look, where is the food? And basically, how can we feed all these people? And if we remember, maybe we heard the story as children in Sunday school. There was a boy there with five loaves and two fish. And that was given to the Lord Jesus. And he broke it and he gave it. And all of them, we read in the verse, they were filled Everything that God does, he does for the best. It's the best. And he filled them. They weren't hungry anymore. They weren't hungry. He filled them. But then we get to this scene here. And Jesus comes walking to the disciples on the sea. Now, I don't know about you. But that would be a scary thing. You would be scared. You would be worried. What is going on? Is it a spirit? And that is what they thought. But what do we find in verse 27 of Matthew chapter 14? We read this. The Lord Jesus said unto them, in verse 27, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid be not afraid oh they'd have every right to be afraid in the middle of the sea and someone is walking towards them they would have every reason to be afraid what does Peter say Lord if it be thou bid me a come unto thee on the water and what does the Lord Jesus say to him one word Come, come. And when Peter was come down on the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, 
he was afraid. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He took his eyes off the Lord. And when he took his eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ, he began to sink. He saw all the things around about him and he began to sink. He was worried. He was scared. He was anxious and he began to sink. But most importantly, he was in danger. He was in danger. He was in danger, dear friend. And you might think to me, well, we're not in any danger today. Those of us that are in the hall, it's nice and warm. The chairs are quite comfortable. I'm not in any danger. What danger am I in? Oh, we are in danger, dear friends. If we're not saved, what do you mean saved? Well, what does saved mean? It's being rescued when we're in danger of something, isn't it? If I said to one of my nieces and nephews, hold onto my hand as we cross the road because it's dangerous and they all of a sudden they're not listening to me and they start to walk over the road and there is a car coming and I grab them, I've saved them. What have I saved them from? The danger of being hit by a car. I've saved them, I've rescued them. That is what saved means. Rescuing someone from danger. But what danger are we in today, dear friends? Well, it is the danger of our sin. Each and every one of us has it. Each and every one of us has sin. The wrong that we do. The wrong that we do before God. And the Bible calls it sin. It's only a small word, isn't it? S-I-N. But in the middle, what is the letter? I. And is that not what a lot of people in our society today, they think of? I I, I, me, me, me. What can I do? What can I get? Oh, dear friends, when we think of ourselves and we think of the danger that we are in, we are in danger because of our sin. Our sin leads us away from God. Our sin separates us from God. And if that is all we had to say this morning, think, I thought you said gospel is good news. What is good news in that? What is the good news that you're telling us that the Bible says that we have all sinned and come short of God's glory? What is the good news in that? There isn't. Oh, but there is good news, dear friend. Sin separates us. Sin separates us, it does. But the wonderful thing is this. That the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to save. The Lord Jesus Christ came into this world to save. Oh, that is the wonderful message of the gospel. That is the wonderful message that we have to tell this morning. That the Lord Jesus Christ loves you and he loves me. And he came into this world to save, to rescue to save and to rescue, that no one should perish, that no one should know God's punishment because of sin. And that is the wonderful message that we have to tell again this morning. Oh, sin separates from God. Sin separates. And because of sin, we are without Christ and without hope. But dear friend, the wonderful message is this. If we turn away from it, we turn away from our sin and we turn to the one who died at Calvary's cross. We can know our sins forgiven. We can know the Lord Jesus Christ. We can know him. Many people will say no to the Lord Jesus. N-O, no. I don't want him. That is what many people say. No, I don't want him. But you know something? It is wonderful to know him. 
K-N-O-W. And that is the wonderful thing of our English language, isn't it? No, K-N-O-W, to know him, to personally know him as your Lord and Saviour. That is the wonder of the message of the gospel, that we can know him. We can have assurance today that we are saved, that we are rescued from our sin. Why? Because of anything that we do? No. Why is that? Because like we've said, the Bible tells us we've all sinned. We cannot save each other because we're in the so same condemnation. We, we have the same problem. The only one that could ever save us, the only one that could ever rescue us from our sin, was the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's the only one that never sinned. He's the only one that never did anything wrong. He's made it possible that we can be made right with God. Through the giving of himself. Oh, that is it, dear friend. The giving of himself. Well, we've been reading in Matthew chapter 14. And we've been reading of Jesus walking on the water to the disciples. And Peter, he comes out. He comes out walking on the water. And he's looking towards the Lord Jesus Christ. And once he's looking to him... Once he's looking to him and he's watching him, he's okay. He's okay. And he's going along fine. But then he sees all round about. He sees the water and the waves. He sees everything. And he starts to fear. And he starts to sink. And he starts to see all that is around. Oh dear friend, we can look at everything around us. We can get took up with the pleasures of this world. And all that it will do is destruct. It is only for a time. The time that we have is only for a time. We don't live forever, do we? Not on this earth we don't. We don't live forever. The Bible tells us we do. Our soul lives forever. Let me make that clear. Our soul lives forever. But our physical bodies on this earth, we don't live forever. We die. Why do we die? We die because of our sin. That is why we die, death. And all of us at some point are going to die unless the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. And I wonder to your friend, are we prepared? Are we ready to meet him? Are we ready to meet the Saviour? Well, what do you mean, are we ready? Well, just like Peter here, he was doing okay. He was looking to the Lord. And then... He took his eyes off and he began to sink and he was in danger. Oh, he was in danger for his life. He was beginning to sink. But what does he do? What does Peter do? Let me just get it. Verse 30. When Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Oh, dear friend, if he didn't cry those words, Lord, save me, he was going to drown. He was going to die. And what do we find? Verse 31, immediately. Oh, that is the wonderful thing, dear friend. Immediately. Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, thou of little faith, where didst thou doubt? O oh, he caught him, he rescued him, he saved him. Oh dear friend, we might not be sinking today. We may not be in the sea and in danger in that sense. But oh our, dear friend, if we are in our sin, if we haven't had that time in our lives when we've got right with God, if there hasn't been that time when we've accepted that our sin is leading us away from God. And because of that, we need a saviour. We need the saviour. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. If there hasn't been that time when we've come to him and asked him to save us. 
then we are lost. We're in that condemnation without hope. But the wonderful message that we have to tell today is we have hope through him, through the Lord Jesus Christ. What does the verse say above us? Seek ye the Lord why he may be found. We have to come to him now. Today is the day of salvation. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed next week. We have to simply come to him and come to him now. What did Peter do? Lord, save me. Oh dear friend. We have to simply come. We have to simply come to him. And if we simply come to him, if we simply come in repentance, what does that mean, repentance? It's turning away. It's turning away from the direction that we're in. And it is going in another direction. It is turning away, dear friend, that's what it is. It's changing direction from one place to another. And that is what we need to do. Our sin is leading us away from God. But the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died on Calvary's cross, he has made it possible that we can be made right with God. He's made it possible. He's the one that bridges the gap. Oh, we've thought of it many times before. And many of us, we've been across a bridge. And what does a bridge do? A bridge gets us from one destination to the other. Or oh, sometimes there might be water in between. There might be a railway line in between. There might be lots of different things. But it's getting from one place to the other. And without that bridge in the middle, you cannot get to the other side. Oh dear friends, simply, the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world to bridge the gap. He came into this world to make it possible that we can get to God. And how do we do that? How do we do that? We cry out to him. We cry out to him. We turn to him. That's what Peter did. Lord, save me. Do you know what was wonderful about that? It was immediate. Oh, he cried in his need. He cried out in his need. And do you know what? The Lord didn't just hear him. He didn't just hear him. He caught him. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. He caught him. He rescued him. And dear friend, the message is this. If we turn from our sin... And turn to the Lord Jesus Christ who had no sin. And who paid the, the penalty of sin on Calvary's cross. If we turn to him, we will be saved. There's no might be. There's no could be. There's no small print. There's no having to write your name on something. It is simple trust and simple faith on what Christ has done at Calvary. And if we do that, we are rescued. Does it take a couple of weeks? Does it take a couple of months? No. Immediately. 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 If we come to him. And you know something? All that come to him, he will receive. He won't turn anyone away. He won't turn anyone away. Nobody who truly comes confessing their sin and truly trusting upon the Saviour, he won't turn you away. He'll accept you. He'll take you as his own. And then, dear friend, we have hope. Not hope as we have assurance. We have knowledge. He's coming back. He's coming again. And he's coming again for those that will receive him. For those that have received him. For those that have trusted in him. He's coming back. Are you prepared? Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready? Or will he turn and say, Depart from me, 
for I never knew you. Depart from me, for I never knew you. The things that we say, we're not here to scare people. But the truth is this, if we're, all, if we're without Christ, if we do not know the Lord Jesus as our saviour, if there hasn't been that time that we've trusted in him, then we're in great danger. And that great danger is because of our sin. And because of our sin, it is leading us to hell. But the Lord Jesus, in his mercy, in his love, in his care for you and I, he's made it possible that we can be saved. And what does that mean, to be saved? To be rescued from the danger that we are in. And that is the wonderful thing. And I know I've shouted a little bit this morning, but it's a wonderful message that we have to tell. It's a wonderful message. Many people say, nobody loves me. I don't know if you can see it, those that are online. God is love. God is love. And he is, he loves us. He loves each and every one of us. But he can have nothing to do with sin. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ came, dear friend. The Lord, it says in the Bible, he came to seek and to save that which I lost. I wonder, what will your response to him be today? Will you accept him? Will you trust in him? Or will you reject him? You might just say, well, I'm undecided. I'm just not going to do anything about it. Well, dear friend, you've made a choice then, haven't you? There's no undecided today. Either we're with Christ or we're without him. Either we trust in him or we don't. There is no undecided. There's no sitting on the fence, we might say, is an old terminology. There's no sitting on the fence. We either know him or we don't. We either accept him or we don't. What will your response be to him? What was Peter's? Lord, save me. I wonder, can you say that today? Lord, save me. For all that come to him, he will not turn away. He will accept you and take you to be with him. Shall we pray? Father, we do just thank thee for the little time that we've been able to spend in thy presence this morning. We do thank thee for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee that he is the way, the truth and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father but through him. So, Father, we do just thank thee for time spent together and we do just pray for thy help and mercy to be upon each and every one of us. We do just give thee thanks now in his precious and worthy name. Amen.